January can be a bit of a rough month. You're left broke after Christmas, you ate a ton of bad food you probably shouldn't have, and you've got resolutions you know you're never going to fulfill. There's also not a lot of interesting games coming for a while now, or so I thought. Pony Island came completely out of nowhere for me. I'd never heard it announced, nobody I know talked about it, and I guess it must have just quietly slipped onto Steam during the winter sale. Given how the barrier to entry for Valve's service has been, uh, lowered, let's say, I had to wonder whether this was going to be just another shameless mobile port, a 2D platformer that touts itself as a throwback to retro games as if that's anything special nowadays, or maybe just a horse management game, or whatever this is supposed to be. As it turns out, Pony Island is none of those things. It's a horror game. Instead of relying on jump scares, annoying amounts of darkness, zombies, animatronics that would never actually be in a real Chuck E. Cheese, or whatever other horror cliches are still being milked dry, Pony Island relies on a very specific brand of horror. Glitch horror. From finding Missing No in Pokemon and messing up your save game, to seeing the dreaded sad Mac face showing up on your school computers, or even something as harmless as seeing the dip switch screen on an arcade game, there's something strangely upsetting about seeing a program or operating system coming apart at the seams. Pony Island is an entire game based on that. The premise is that you're playing an old arcade game featuring a pink or sometimes white pony that looks like a triceratops to me. It's a simple runner style platformer where you have to jump, shoot, and glide your way towards the goal. One small catch however is that this game was created by the devil himself. Your soul is trapped inside this game and you have to fix and further break it in order to escape. This is done through a combination of simple stages of Pony Island itself and through a series of puzzles based on arcade settings menus, browsers, and even instant messenger windows. The entire time the game is actively working against you. The rules are frequently being broken with your mouse cursor pushing certain things away from them, the devil showing up to taunt you or lead you away from your objectives, and some seriously unsettling stuff in the late game that I'll get to later. As far as difficulty goes, I'll admit that I got pretty annoyed at some segments of the game. The actual Pony Island segments aren't too challenging, but one in particular goes on for a little bit too long and has just a few too many fail states for my life. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Superjoy66 and I got a, a new review for you. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. So here we have... Shovel Knight. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. Looks just like another game, doesn't it? Like, uh, Mega Man, maybe? <laughs> Say what? It's not 1988. <laughs> what, I step into a time machine like in Back to the Future? <laughs> I want you to kill me. Also some puzzles that can leave you kind of feeling frustrated or inadequate for not being able to solve them. The lack of a hard fail state, i.e. a game over, made it compelling to keep trying though. And I have to say, when you do finally figure those puzzles out, at times so much so that it seems like you're really cheating the system, it feels amazing and lends itself to the theme of the game perfectly. The game's soundtrack is great, largely consisting of an unsettling drone and retro game music for lack of a better description. The tracks are all familiar and they feel oddly even more unsettling because of it. Sound effects are abrasive at times, like whenever the devil is talking, but it fits well. While the actual Satan themed imagery in the game is a bit hit or miss from a horror standpoint, I find it takes a real backseat to the fact that what you're playing can cease to function as expected at any given time. There are some stages where nothing out of the ordinary happens, and you're left in suspense just wondering when things are going to go awry again. I wouldn't say this game is horror that keeps you up at night, nor is it something that just startles you because of a loud noise. It may not even be horror in the traditional sense, but Pony Island is genuinely unsettling and surprisingly good at tricking you. Warning: The following contains spoilers from from, in my opinion, the best scene in the game. If you have any intention of playing Pony Island, click here to skip past this part. Eventually you're left with only one core file that's guarded by Asmodeus. In addition to asking you some questions, he gives you a very simple instruction. Don't look away from him. It's implied that every time you get a question wrong, he'll take your soul. Or maybe somebody else's soul. The questions aren't too hard, providing you follow his instructions. One in particular, though, stood out to me. It's not even a question at all. He just asks you to type in something vile. I went through a number of options naturally, before deciding on this. 
After doing so, a friend of mine started messaging me on Steam. I don't know how they managed to do this, but this was a trick the game itself had pulled right down to my friend's current avatar. I actually thought that I'd forgotten to set myself to offline and was broadcasting this the entire time, which was doubly awkward because I told him I was going to bed but really just wanted to play Pony Island. Whoops. That brief moment of panic was brilliant though, and it managed to freak me out not because of the game itself, but because it made me question whether or not I had done something outside of the game. The only problem with this scene is that once you have seen it already, it'll never have the same impact as the first time. It's hard to review this game without spoiling too much about it, and just like with Undertale, it's really something you just have to experience for yourself. Pony Island is a very short game, clocking in at just about two hours for me, and probably less if you're good at puzzles. But also, given how I didn't find every secret in the game, there's incentive to go back and try it again. Another upside to this game is that it only costs five dollars, and only one more dollar on top of that if you want to buy the soundtrack alongside it. After playing so many bigger games in the latter half of 2015, I'd almost forgotten that this kind of price point still existed, so it's good to be back. For only being a few days into 2016 when Pony Island was released, I'm very excited to see where this year is going to go as far as games are concerned, when there's already such a fresh, interesting title right out of the gate. Developed by only three people with a lot of imagination, and probably with a very similar outlook on just how upsetting it is to see technology not working as intended, Pony Island is a fresh take on horror that I can only hope doesn't inspire a ton of shitty knockoffs that miss the point entirely. Thank you.